Hello and welcome to Infinity. Did you know there are two very different types of saturation control, even though they look exactly the same when you look at them on screen? I didn't, um, but then I found out, so here's what I found. Let's go to this one here and hit Control J twice to get some duplicates to play with. On the first one, we're going to go to HSL. And in here, hue saturation and luminosity saturation is the one control we got here. If we turn it up, things get more and more and more saturated until this chap looks like a demon and everything's very bright. And if we turn it down, it gradually goes to grey. So let's have a look at the other saturation one. So we're turning off that top layer there so we can use the one below. And that's when it, under the Vibrance control here. So I just call this Vibrance Saturation as opposed to HSL Saturation. Here we've got Vibrance Saturation. Looks the same. But watch what happens when we turn it up. And I turn it up here and nowhere near as aggressive a change. In fact, the guy just lits, looks a bit embarrassed, maybe a bit sunburned. And other things have brightened as well. And if I turn it down, it's kind of black and white as well, but let's have a look at this one. Put this down to zero. And so you've got the HSL one and the Vibrant one. Not a lot of difference, is there? But there's subtle differences. And why is that? So notice there's things like this area here, which is green, changes. The areas up here and a bit down in here are going to change as well because there's a yellow in there. It's not much here, but there's more up here. So to understand what's going on, we need to look at it in a bit more detail, a bit more technical stuff. So let now that we've got here, this is a picture. We've got the primary and secondary colours and black, grey and white going solid, fading to black, fading to white and fading to grey. And to see what's happening with the, when we do this, look what happened here. Note underneath there you've got red is high green, green and blue are zero. When it fades to black, what happens is red basically goes down and green and blue remain very, very low. Fading to white, you're bringing green and blue up to meet the red, which stays high. And fading to grey, then it's a combination of the two. Red goes down whilst green and blue go up. That's an interesting point. So let's do the same thing here. Now we'll do HSL on this top one. And we'll play with the saturation. And if I turn the saturation up, and I'll move, in fact, move it back and forth, you can see the only thing that it's affecting is the right hand one here. So it's only pushing it towards grey. So in other words, it's not pulling up the opposite colours, the other, the other colours. It's on or pushing one down, the main colour down. It is bringing the colours together in the middle. And you can see this as well. It happens the same in reverse. So instead of being just hitting this shade into grey, when we bring it down, what happens is everything goes towards grey. Right down here and see it's in the middle there. It's kind of useful, you know, sort of a you know, greyish colour. That's which you, you can can we make a nice tweak. But when we get to the bottom, all of these colours here are going to grey. And that's because it starts at the top and they, and they just call it collapsing in towards the middle. In our picture here, there were it does go to different colours. And that's because of the mix of red, green and blue. Let's have a look now at what the Vibrance one does. If I go to Vibrance now, if we turn Saturation up, Look, we've got more movement now. Yeah, look at the way this is moving. So we've got the, the fade to black, the fade to white and the fade to grey all being affected. So this is very, very different behaviour. In fact, when you turn it up, you look carefully in the middle of here. The red looks a bit different in there. It's gone almost a slightly magenta -y, So it's kind of, you know, there's a rose colour in there. So it's looking at them differently. Uh, and also, if I just drag this down straight down here, so here I notice I got 
red 202. So it's at this level I've gone down 202, keep going down. But here green's only 156, so it's being reduced at a different rate. And blue is 235, so it's quite differently. They're moving in a different way. And it's partly explained as if you go down the other way. Now, look at this. It's, it's been quite different. So when you've got saturated colours, they don't all go to grey. They go to perceptual colours. Because if I go back to the middle, double click there, yellow is perceptually brighter than blue. And so it's being made brighter. So it's working on a what it looks like to your eye. So in other words, the saturation, if you have to do natural saturation changes, the bottom line is the vibrant one is better than the HSL one. The HSL one is also useful in other situations. So there you go. That's an overview of the difference between the HSL saturation and the vibrant one. You can use them differently. They are, have different values. So on the top one here, we can have a form of grey. You can have an interesting sort of like muted thing here and you can saturate it up to your here, but things and particularly skin tones. And this is one of the things that's deliberately done here. Skin tones um, go bananas. Everything else is very bright. Whereas turn it off. Take the one down here. Now when you bring this up, you're going to get a gentler, more natural picture. So there it's just a little bit, you know, put, muted. It's a bit more balanced in terms of the colour. And as you go up here, see the skin tones are not affected, even not badly, not you know, even when it's high. So a lot of the time, in other words, I will use the saturation in here if I just want to keep the picture natural, unless I want to force something. So there we go. Vibrance control gives you a better saturation. HSL control gives you a more of a heavy-handed one. Thank you very much for watching.